by Arya Doctor Ross regarding the national exit test. I was getting a lot of mails right from the uh, 2020 time. I got into the exam, how it will be done, when it is going to be conducted. So my prime objective was that the batch, first batch, which is going to take this exam, my it is it is my sincere responsibility, and I will attempt it very sincerely to remove the anxiety from the minds of the final MBBS students who are going to take this exam. See, any exam is going to create some anxiety even in the mind of toppers or not so toppers. So that's why I decided I think I will talk to you. So what will be the national exit test? We want to conduct, conduct a test covering your clinical subject and related other material from previous subjects which you have studied in reasonable manner, which should cover most of the things what you study during your MBBS. The attempt will be to test what you know, not to test what you don't know. The problem with the commercial exam was that there was tendency to do selective reading. After some time, you know, these are the topics frequently asked. In cardiology, MI is more important, CHF now is not important, arrhythmias are asked, what are these things? So that kind of you know, tendency developed, developed among the students, and this is also unfortunately transmitted from senior to junior. This is a legacy which continues for decades together. Secondly, when you know that some new examiner is preparing papers and he gets X number of chance. So you have a tendency to study those things, but ultimately when we become doctor and go in field, are we going to get only those patients? No. Secondly, in with this, there is a lot of chance factor, whether you score score well or you don't score so well, or you pass or fail sometimes. This exam is going to cover the whole area, so stress will not be on selective reading and mastering few things to get very good marks. You need general to comprehend the subject. That's all. So do general reading. When you take this kind of test, you don't have to know these are five points, these are seven uh, complications. This thing, there is no need. When the question comes, you if you have done the reading, just a general reading of the topic, it will automatically come to your mind. So that is why there are questions which are going to be, you know, mostly on comprehension means when you are reading, are you understanding the subject? What is being conveyed? So that is why this exam was. I was I've been telling right from the beginning that this exam is not to create problem, but to solve problem for a young doctor. One in qualifying as a doctor and passing the exam. It's a common exam. There is uniform approach all over the country. Nobody can say, oh, in that particular area, patients are usually simpler, so they are higher on the merit. In other situations, the patients are difficult. This time, the XR exam was not so good. So these biases are removed. Secondly, ultimately, you have to compete at national level and Many of you will be competing at global levels. Many of you are already aspiring to take an exam for US, Canada, or UK, both for going there as well as you know improving your skills also. You want to study in a better institute, in a better country sometime. So we are preparing everybody for that also. Not by straining you but making everything enjoyable for you. So right from the beginning, you are exposed to a system which you will realize, all of you, I am stressing all of you without exception, ultimately are going to realize this exam pattern is better than the other. Because I have gone through all those stages and we used to be, I mean, not, you know, any other message, but just want to tell, oh, he was not to this fellow, or, this examiner gives better marks to girls, so this, all these are false. Those who write well will report well. 
in this exam, somebody has performed. Computer will not know somebody is related to somebody or somebody is, you know, good looking or not so good looking. So all these factors, X, student, people have been having, that will be removed. So that is why this exam is going to be good for you. Now in this exam, we, I know that you have not completed your course. So when this exam for then you keep main thing in mind, you have to be familiarized with the type of questions which you are going to get in future. Or, or how how you are going to be evaluated. What is going to be the ultimate objective of the exam, and nothing beyond that. So. Don't think that all oh, the questions are out of the course which has yet to be covered because I know there are still about six to seven months left in completing your uh, finance and BBS course. So forget about it. How much you scored, not important. Pay focus, uh, pay attention to the type of questions which are which you are going to attend so you can prepare accordingly in your exam. Then if you all think. There were a lot of questions which we have got from all, you know, all of all parts of our country. Most of these going to are going to be answered once regulations are in place and take it for granted. It's going to be very soon in place and they, that will answer all your queries. And there one question was somebody said that why the Exam, if you want to improve the score, why they have to wait after passing step two for one year? We have removed that clause also, but that was a year kept just to tell you so that during internship to you learn the skill and practical how you have to see the patient. There were questions there, uh, queries that what will be the curriculum? We don't know the curriculum. Curriculum and course and study material is going to be same what has been for conventional exam. The method of evaluation is different. That will evaluate all aspects that is going to favor students. The method of evaluation is going to be uniform, impartial, and that will test. Suppose there are three big questions and seven, eight short notes, and by chance you have not read anything, that part is totally gone. Here, there are going to be in one paper, 120 or 60 questions. So if you don't know one or two, how does it matter? You know other questions, so move on. What you have to do in MCQ is like time is most important. Type of questions when you attend. If you don't know anything, taking time, just mark that question and move on to the next. When you have finished most of that, then you can come back. So the questions which you know readily, they are not left in the end because of shortage of time. So Keep on answering, which you can answer immediately, but don't be in a rush. Keep thought, flow of thought streamlined. There should not be turbulence or anxiety. If suppose anxiety comes because of some question, just close your eyes, do two or three deep breathing, move on further. Because in anxiety, that will create problem for you. Because logical thinking has to be there. What we are testing is, can you think logically? Can you comprehend what is being conveyed in the stem of the question? And the options, almost always, the answer clue of the answer will be in the question itself. So if you read that carefully, you will be able to answer better. So that is what you have to do. So don't waste time on one question, which is which you are having difficulty understanding, move forward. Then when the time is left, then you come back again and then start answering that way you will not be missing questions in this. Or there was some question that in few said the exams are getting delayed. So this we discussed here with all our members and presidents because our aim in NMC is to improve the standard of medical education without stressing the student. That is the motto and objective. So all our presidents of, you know, usually board especially and members of our, 
other board, they all also advise that how we can plan this exam because you some batch is late, so we can't delay rest of the country. So we step one, we have kept twice a year. So because of some regional circumstances under control of the university or beyond control of our, you know, with the natural circumstances is something delays, that college will not be unduly delayed. Within six months, there is another exam. They will take it. Secondly, that is why I have removed the supplementary of step one also. Why? Because the word supplementary gives a connotation. Oh, this batch is not so good. Whereas anybody who has passed the exam is equal to everybody else. So I have removed this, which X as a dot. Somebody said, oh, you have a supplementary batch. Why? What is supplementary batch? So we have two exams in May and November. Step one, they are both main exams. So there is no supplementary. So if some delay is there, or suppose somebody could not appear because of illness, medical condition, or something, he wants to take, he will not lose one year, just a few months. And it is possible that he will be eligible even for PG counseling with the next pretty main batch. So that also we have taken care. We don't want any kind of stress for any student. There was another question that those who have already passed ENT and ophthalmology in part one of final MBBS exam, what is to be done for them? There are both options open for you. One, of course, you will other subjects you will be taking whenever it is conducted, maybe sometime in uh, February or January, depending on how majority of the college is finished. But those who have already taken those exams, there are options available that they can take along with the main exam or they can take after six months. The marks will be added. But ideal will be for you because I know that you don't have to spend much time. Just in the gap itself, you can flip through pages and knowledge doesn't die out. The practical knowledge which we are going to test the same which you have studied for the first exam, you will see you, you will score better with the main exam also. This is question of only for this year. So we'll keep both option, both the option open and we'll come out with a solution which will suit you, not suit colleges or NMC. It suits candidates. We'll keep that in mind. So don't worry about that factor also. There were questions what will happen to other old batches of MBBS student. Anyway, this address was going to be only for you, but you suppose it's there. Other batches who have completed internship, they are taking FMG, need PG. Till your batch will be the first batch who will be getting PG based on next step one score and very, very prepared by that. And that will happen once you have passed step two. So there is time. So those batches can decide when they are going to take NEET PG, which is going to be conducted in the interim, or they want to take the step one exam. So every year they are taking NEET PG. Whenever they took they take this PG entrance chance, they can take NEET, NEET uh, the next step one also. That will be permitting after once the next uh, when the need PG stop, anybody who wants to enter PG, he can take this exam. For one year, depending on how much is the gap, we can think of equivalence also, but that should method should be perfectly normal. This anyhow doesn't concern you, so don't pay much attention to this. But I wrote in the passing, I'll mention because many of your friends. In hostel, they will be waiting for you. What happened? Tell us, tell us also. Or many of you, I know, unofficially are already sitting among you. So we will do that. This test is basically is a practice test for you. So that I told earlier also, don't focus how much you score. We will give you the score also. 
that you should use no moral as a moral booster, not as depressor. Because this is called as moral. If I know in different colleges, what has the course been covered? So it's going to be different. Just focus only on one thing. Type of exam, how to attempt it. That's all. Now I will go through the presentation which you have prepared, which should be able to answer your other queries and tell you about the exam. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. Phone size for me, the screen is too small, so I'll be looking at the paper. It is going to be a comprehensive computer based examination based on high quality multiple choice question. When I am saying high quality doesn't mean difficult. High quality means it is going to be uniform for everybody. Predictability outcome for an average student is going to be uniform across all medical colleges. That is what it means high quality. There is no variation from place to place. This is, of course, this will ensure objectivity and national wide delivery at the same time, and it is going to be in a robust manner. And they will, uh, you know, test both. It's in a small part we call analytical approach as well as comprehension. Next. And in comprehension, Next. you must have seen what is comprehension. You should be able to see what is being conveyed. And to be very precise, in, in a way to decode the step of the question. As I told you earlier, that will tell you basically what, what, what is the likely answer out of the four choices which you are going to see. We want to discourage the you know mugging up of things, the road learning. Five causes of this thing, what are causes of constipation, what are complications of narcotic analgesic. You should know narcotic analgesics can cause these these things. It acts at you know cerebral cortex. The cause uh, effect of anti-stomach is this, and brain stem effect is this. So it's going to be said uh, the complications also, depending on the dose at what level it is going to affect. So that kind of understanding when you study, you develop, everything is going to be very easy for you. Now the problem solving and analytical problem solving, they can give a case scenario, a set of investigation, can you ask the diagnosis or give diagnosis, uh, you know, few laboratory tests and can ask you what next investigation you will ask for this patient. You might say, uh, I'll ask for CT scan or something or whatever that it is going to be simple, very logical approach. Whatever you have been taught in your words, most of the things will be from your clinical learning, practical learning. Then, of course, recall type. So, and the, what I am saying the next is level of knowledge. Basically, this is because when we are preparing merit for post graduation then there should be some grading. For passing MBBS is all right. Everything, everybody performs at what level, there is no issue now. We have a doctor who should have minimum competence expected out of an Indian graduate who is going to treat our citizens. But when you prepare merit, then we have to have questions of difficult, different difficulties there. So must know are the questions which will be forming the main component of a doctor should know when he is going to be a doctor in community. So means you must know as a doctor these, these information. So that kind of question that will form up 60%. This will give you a fairly good chance of passing the exam if you know this one. Nice to know, slightly difficult, where you need to have analytical approach. You have to think little, uh, you know, in a direction. As a clinician, these are the things, what I should do. There can be little confusion created. So in this, one stem can create little confusion or the choices also can be little, you know, the difference between four choices may not be very obvious. So that also can increase this. That will be about 30%. May know, 
to differentiate in top 10, 15 percent of student questions are going to be a little difficult. That can be based on the recall phenomena or uh, asking for some unusual situation, which we routinely don't encounter. The type 30 percent and 10 percent are basically to differentiate that thing in preparing the merit. Why is this? Not because of anything that we want to create problem, but anyway, when somebody wants to go for higher study, he should prove his worth as compared to his other colleagues so that he gets subject of his choice. Many of you might prefer surgery as first choice, but there may be many people who may not like uh, to become surgeon. Similarly, periodic medicine or medicine, whatever subject. So to differentiate that only the better candidate gets the subject of his choice. That is why these two categories will be there. But to prove yourself in the field when you are treating patient in the community or in a hospital or in a medical college also, you have to be better to treat your patients better than an average doctor. So that is also another objective. So when you study, you can keep these things in mind. Next please. Can you change? Yeah. These are the subjects. Three major. Surgery, medicine and allied. Surgery and allied and obstetrics gynecology. Now many must be thinking what are the allied subjects. Medicine and related. You know, questions from cardiology, respiratory medicine, gastro gastroenterology, as is anyway you are reading. Plus, Allied, maybe from your first and second prof, related subject, forensic medicine, community medicine, subject, topics as related to medicine may be asked. Suppose they ask some viral pneumonia. What do you understand by is it a particular type of pneumonia? Is it a nosopomial occurring in hospital setting or it's a community acquired pneumonia? That kind of questions may be asked. So it is going to be simple. Secondly, in FMT or anything, suppose somebody sustained a blood injury on the right side of the flank. Then water and the patient comes initially with pain abnormal, but gradually he starts developing hypotension. What can be the type of injury? Now, if you have read and you know that a right side liver is there, there can be injury to liver. Lower down flank on the lateral side, kidney is there. There can be injury to kidney. If somebody has a full stomach, there can be injury to stomach. You should know that. But that is that is that is what I mean by like allied subject, related applied subject as it applies to that view. So community medicine, bad, final, and you know that many uh, clinical situations, they are heavily dependent on factors given in pathology, microbiology, and other things. But these things but are going to be limited. We have kept 10%, maybe a little more, or, you know, as per your understanding of a life. But we will be keeping around that part. The number will be according to that. See the screen? Yeah, it has come there. So, so don't worry about that. Allied subjects also in surgery, like uh, orthopedics can be there. Suppose somebody sustained a head injury, a blood injury, he had a fall, blood injury was there, patient walked in normally. Nothing happened. But after a gap of few hours, patient went into a you know, sudden uh, drowsiness development, went into coma. What kind of findings you are likely to find? It is going to be surgical hematoma, concussion injury, or what? A hypertensive went through severe stress in the family. He complained of headache and suddenly he started vomiting. Now, what can be the reason? These are the applied aspects. So that you should know. And that much of neurology, neurosurgery, everything to store to you. These are going to be very simple questions which every MBBS student studies. So I wanted to reward your allied subjects apprehension. I hope I have made it amply clear.
and your faculty members will further clear it out. And when you you will start reading, there is no problem going to pediatrics, ENT, and ophthalmology. 16 questions each. And in these also, other allied subject can be there. Somebody, two kids were fighting, somebody was got boxed on the eye. The eyeballs appear a little smaller. Vision is normal. What can be the thing? Can it be a broad fracture? Or it can be just uh, a retinal detachment in adult patient? So these things are simple thing. Bow and arrow were being used by kids. Somebody kids is that either something injured him. What is injury? Should we go to the ophthalmologist immediately? What are the types of injury? Similar questions I'm going to be asked. It is not going to be anything out of your course in lecture theater and in board. So, next slide, please. Thanks. See, we have been very considerate, I'll tell you. 120 questions and three hours. Those who have taken USMLE, they will know questions are. Anywhere between 160 to 210 in three hours. But we don't want to create that kind of situation for you. Our idea is that you should keep comfortable. So we have got only 120 questions for three hours. So practically you'll be getting one and a half minute. This is good enough every time. And that will be enough for you then two hours rest. So if you go out, you have tea, coffee or light tea, come back. In the afternoon, we have kept a smaller subject. And in periodics also, many things will come from medicine also. So we don't have to worry. And time is one and a half hour. We are not keeping it every day. We are giving you a rest day. So next day, you are again fresh. During rest day, what is the importance of rest day? It is not for revising the subject. It is for relaxing your brain. Metabolism or brain should be, you know, normal. There should not be no, no anaerobic metabolism, electric acid should not be collected here. So that your thought process is good. You can relax, have a good night's sleep. Good night's sleep is very important whenever you are taking any of these kind of exams. So sleep well and don't try to read. In the early in the morning, that will only increase and that you go, oh, I don't know this also, oh, I don't know this also. Whenever you take the pages of the book, you say, no, oh, I didn't know this. I have taken, I have spent more than 52 years now in this profession. Right? I entered in 72. Whenever I change pages, initially I used to do it, like you in the first time you second time I used to get depressed. So I stopped doing that. I'll sleep well, go fresh in the examination hall. I always did better after that. So good night sleep is very important. And you might take it a little abnormal. During my MS exam, people took me from common room because I was playing carrom with them. They said they put me in my room. You better go and sleep. Next day you are having MS exam. And that was in PJ. But still, that approach I have seen everywhere, it helps. You may practice according to your personality. But in the morning, if you don't see books, that is going to be better for you. In the night, you can read for whatever you want to read, but sleep well. Sleep causes flow of signals, streamlining way in the brain. Otherwise, there will be short circuit. And you know what short circuiting can cause. And object is tiny. We have kept three hours, which I think is more than enough for you. So these are going to be the papers. You will have ample time to answer all those questions. Next, let us go to the next. I'll talk very briefly about step two. Step two, what has been seen that our best of our doctors who studied very well during four and a half years course and who was selected in very good institute also, they cracked even AIMS and PGI exam. 
they were poor when they were doing attending patient bedside. And the single most factor was they were not actively participating in teaching program or training during their internship. Internship forms the base on which rest of our career will depend. Whatever we learn during our internship, it stays with us for heaven. Whatever procedure you have attempted during internship, you when you join your house job, first year PG, you will ahead of others and this will give you such a moral boosting, positivity in your thought process, then rest of three years for you during your post graduation will be enjoyable. Otherwise, you will always be tense. Intention, if you do well, the exam we are kept in such a way that it is not going to give you any merit that you scored so much away, only pass or fail. You have learned enough during internship or you have not learned enough in, during internship to be an independent doctor to look after citizens of our country. That is the whole objective. But achievements are multifold. When if you do well, in all your competitive exam abroad or here, you will do better if you have done your internship well. You can carry a handbook during your internship, pocket book of surgery or medicine. There are books available, surgery on round or medicine on round. You carry that, whatever you study bedside, you read even once. Any type of patient for the rest of the life, you don't have to read that. It is always going to stay with you. What you have to do rest of the life? The advances in knowledge, you have to keep yourself updated. So it's, we are concerned that all interns should be very sincere for one year when they are going to bedside and should never miss any internship posting. Never, never, you, that is going to make you an excellent doctor and specialist also later on. So that is why this exam will be conducted after one year. When you are going to complete this exam, as each exam will be of actual case, or possibly that is objective structured clinical examination. If you don't understand this term, don't bother now. During internship, you will know your faculty, your teachers will tell you. Simulations in your simulation lab, they can take you and they can ask you, or they can ask you to intubate a dummy or whatever. That will depend on the university exam, which is going to be conducted. But in this also, we will try to make that for all interns all over the country. The assessment is going to be uniform and same. So it is going to be only pass or fail. Once you pass, pass step one and practical exam, which is being going to be conducted by respective universities. We are not encroaching on that. You will be eligible to get temporary registration to its start internship, it will be done automatically. Once you have finished internship and you have passed this, you are eligible to participate in PG entrance exam. You are eligible to get permanent registration and practice as an independent graduate of India. So that is why this is important. What are the subjects? Medicine and allied subjects. Rest of the things are same except orthopedics and PMR, physical medicine and rehabilitation. Because then you go as a doctor in periphery as a graduate doctor. Then sometimes some child mother will say, I don't know why he's crying. I just lifted him one, from one place and put her there without realizing that she lifted by holding one arm. This might have dislocated his shoulder or created a sprain in the elbow or anything. So you as a doctor should know during internship, so your ortho training also, you should be doing very carefully. You will be seeing a lot of accident and trauma cases. So you should know how to stabilize organs which are having obvious trauma or which are likely to have trauma. They should be stabilized. So splinting has to be done. Any case of trauma, we all know the neck has to be stabilized. So this you should all know. These, these kind of things will be 
class 10 orthopedics 10 pmr how to help him for minor exercise to a geriatric patient who comes to you so all these things will be assessed during your internship it is going to be fun if you have worked during your exam i don't think if you have been attend attending all your internship posting anybody should fail after one year i am so much sure if you are regular only those who have missed they will have problem then on only god can help such because during rest of the life what are they going to do patients will avoid coming to their clinic so better be sincere during your internship also the time schedule and modality so next to exam will be decided and will be inform you well in time so there is not an issue and this exam is to be conducted before the counseling or pg starts so this exam step one suppose you are finishing in february i'm just giving the example don't take it as it is then probably we might start january for instance batch which are going to complete course on 31st december step 1 will be conducted in november those who are going to complete on 30th june will be conducted in may and should be over by second or third week practical exams will be conducted in initial two weeks of the next month that is june and december so the result is out by end of third week definitely so that participation in pga exam can be there without any problem similarly the internship also in the last month of internship step to exam will be taken as of now conduction of mock test or you guys call it practice test also we as of now have decided 28th of july registration is start that you will know that should be 28 june the advertise the notice was supposed to come today so let us see what aims has been done aims has done and this time we are permitting only file in mbbs student because this exam is in with the idea of removing anxiety from the minds of final mbbs student exam and this i had planned when nmc came to existence and those who know who are communicating initially they will remember i have said that this exam is not to make your life tough it is going to make your life comfortable just imagine with one exam you are a mbbs doctor you are qualified to start your internship finishing internship you will be an independent doctor based on the same exam you can take pg also you don't have to take need pg every year we there with lot of uncertainty i get my choice or not so that is why we are doing this so that with the same exam or if you are not happy with your score you can take the next exam again but after completing step 2 exam one thing i want to make clear that the score which will be counted for pg will be the score of your one complete cycle many student must be thinking now okay in first i'll just clear major subject try to score better in those and the rest subject i'll take in second attempt to get a good merit to get good pg they are mistaken in one cycle what will be the total number of marks total marks that mark will be the okay. marks to be counted for merit ranking for pg allocation and other things will be made clear in the act which is good gadget notification which is going to come in the near future so i have i hope i have made myself happy clear and i wish you all a very good luck for your final mbbs step one for this next one set up good luck that you try to pick up most of the type of information which is going to be useful for it thank you very much thank you all the faculty members the students who have taken time out to participate in this discussion thank you thank you
todo 